Welcome to Tweety's Take. Pardon the bouncy footage. I'm going out for a walk with my daughter here. And you won't see much of the street because I don't really want to show the location of where I am. But um, for this video, I'm going to be addressing UFO sightings and, and other phenomena that have been coming out from the government to the public. And I, I just wanted to address these things because I think they're going to ramp up and we're going to see more released in the near future, especially in the upcoming months. So... With UFO sightings, this is something that I've been interested in for a long time. I used to stay up late at night listening to, um, oh, talk show, what was it? Coast to Coast? Coast to Coast Radio, that was a fantastic segment. I think they still do it, but I haven't, I haven't tuned in for a long time. But on Coast to Coast, they would always get in the the wackiest people to talk about what they have seen what they had heard uh, different phenomena that that was unexplainable um but one thing in particular i was interested in was in glowing orbs and and they talked about how uh, at different lakes of michigan they would see glowing orbs that would be in the air and um, you'd see them fly up into the sky and almost as if they were uh, traveling to someplace else and they they would converse with each other or, or at least that's that's what it appeared to be happening they would come together so two orbs three orbs whatever the group was and then they would start uh, either vibrating or bouncing or or just stay in the same vicinity and then they would speed off up or in different directions and I, I thought those stories were fascinating whether they are fabrications or not but as time went on, I kept on hearing more and more of these stories. I heard more and more about UFOs, and and I thought, there, there's got to be something to this, right? Because you can't just have one of these occur, and then, and then so many other people see it as well. Like, I know there are effects where people can be um, influenced by what other people say, and their experiences can be greatly affected by other people's perceptions and what they admit and so your perceptions may be altered um but in this case it just seemed like it was happening far too often for it to be a coincidence now with ufo sightings the government has now been coming out saying yes they're real yes uh this is something that the air force has been in contact with at least they've they've seen them on their radar they've even had visual sights on them um and they describe some of the ships as being tic-tac in shape, how they seem to defy all laws of, of known physics. And, and that's what I want to emphasize, is that they, they defy known laws of physics. Scientists and, and other people will say they defy the laws of physics, but that's only as we know them. Our, our minds and our perceptions continually change, and we find out that, hey, maybe, maybe we've locked ourselves into a model that actually needs to be expanded. That, uh, oh, is she asleep? I think she's fallen asleep. Um, you know, we've locked ourselves into a model that doesn't allow for for more expansion. It doesn't allow for uh, experimentation and setting our sights above and beyond what we, what we believe we can achieve. So, at any rate, they have confirmed that there are ships that defy all known laws of physics. And it, it's baffling. It's absolutely baffling to those who have seen the footages. And I've watched some of them. And yes, it seems like a lot of the times you, you have grainy footage, and so it's almost impossible to make out what's going on. Um, but then there's also footage where you can at least tell a shape, uh, whether it's a tic-tac shape or it's a triangle what have you but um you know at, at least there's something on the footage now recently i saw a video there was a whistleblower who got up in front of a conference and, and i cannot find this video anywhere on the internet i had access to basically a cloud storage file and in this cloud storage it had so many different documents and videos that that i had never seen before and so i downloaded this specific one um which i might upload later but with a video the guy is talking about a spaceship that that he was brought to by the u.s government because he was really good at making engines and studying them 
and he created an engine that was the exact replica, basically, of a spaceship that the U.S. government had in their possession. Now, this is him explaining the story, right? So, take it with a grain of salt, but he explained that as he went into the facility that they took him to. Um, he examined the spaceship, and the outside was almost flesh-like. Like, it was warm to the touch. It was almost an organic matter, but it had been... Uh, it had a breach in the side, so part of it had been blown up or impacted. Uh, very, very wild. Very wild to listen to. So if I can find the video, I'll definitely put that up. Um, but as I was listening to it, I thought, okay, he's pretty detailed. Uh, but not detailed to the point where you're thinking, wow, this is a made-up story. It's more, this was obviously something that was memorable to him. Uh, he brought up various names and whatnot of different people he was in contact with and all the names checked out. So anyway, it was a fascinating story. Um, but you have to think that all these people who have shared their, their experience have been completely trashed, completely thrown to the side into the gutter by the media, by celebrities, by anyone who um, who wants to say that UFOs aren't real, by scientists, by special interest groups, by the government. They've been t completely trashed, and their reputations have been tarnished. And now that the government is coming out and saying, oh, well, actually, these things are real, like, what kind of... What kind of morals are you standing on after you have totally destroyed everyone's reputation who even speaks up about this? Then you go around and say, well, actually, it's true. You believe us, we're the government. Like, there's no moral standing for that. So then you start to think, what other conspiracies are true? Well, uh, well I say conspiracy because that's the term that's been lent to these <laughs> to these stories, but conspiracy is really just, you know, there's a group of people plotting things in the dark. Um, so, what, what about all of these other theories that are out there? What about a shadow government? What about, um, like, Atlantis? Or what about, uh, I can't think on the spot right now, but you know what I mean? What about other, all of these other theories that people have had? Um, if the government came out and said tomorrow, hey, you know what, these theories are true as well, what happens to the people who have been saying it this whole time? Or, also, do we just believe the government uh, just because they said so? Or do we continue to say, no, this is fake, this is fake? Because you can take it two ways. You can say, well, the government is only saying it's real because now they're going to benefit from it. And I'll tell you how they can benefit from this. Um, or you can say that the government is telling the truth. Uh, so how would the government benefit from all of these stories? Well, you know that they're pushing for a great reset. That's, that's not in the dark. That's open. Everyone knows. Uh, unless you're... <laughs> unless you're not opening your eyes at all. Like, I, I guess you can be blind to it, but it's there. It's called the Great Reset, and they keep on talking about it, and how they're going to push for a different economy and a different world by 2030. That, no secret. So with the Great Reset, they want a one-world government. They want something that can keep everyone together under their fingers and in, in, in their grasp. And how do you do that? You create a common enemy. You create a common fear, right? Uh, this past year, it's been, it's been the virus, um, and, you know, you can go into whether it, it was, uh, a terrible virus, or if it was just the government being, um, over-responsive or overreacting. you know, there are a lot of theories about the virus as well, um, but what I can say is that from that virus, government has upticked their power. They have grabbed a lot of power in this time, and there's been a lot of distribution, redistribution of, of wealth. Well, now we're also seeing that the economy is really, really struggling. As they're printing more and more money, as inflation is occurring, which they're outright denying that it's actually happening. But if you look at the markets, something is happening, right? Yesterday, like I said, 
um, or on Saturday, I said yesterday, uh, two days ago, that uh, the price on a product, a $6 product, increased by a full dollar. But this is happening all across the board with all of these, all the products on the shelves, but it's also happening at, at the level of oil. And so if it happens at the level of oil, you know, that affects everything. And everything starts to, to increase in price. And to the consumer, it may look pretty small. But to those who are bringing the product to the consumer, these prices to them are, are raising in the hundreds, sometimes in the thousands. And then they just divvy it out and pass it down so we don't notice it as much. But we're seeing... I know, you're tired. We're seeing hyperinflation, and it's getting really, really bad. So they can also use that as another crisis to say, look, we need more control. We need... Uh, to really crack down on this, even though their control is what is causing this. And that's the absurd part. But now they come out and they say, hey, there are UFOs. Uh, here's what we know. And now they start talking about it. What are they going to do? They're going to ramp up the fear. They're going to ramp up um, this idea that there are aliens and people who are, or a, a different race that's going to come down and possibly take over or destroy us or, or whatever they want to, the narrative to be. They'll, they'll make it, right? They'll push that narrative. So if they want an environment of fear, they will get it. And they will keep on advocating and calling for a one world government. And a lot of people would gladly give up their rights in the name of, of safety, of being protected, because they cannot face the unimaginable they cannot face the idea that there's something more in this universe than them so anyway i just wanted to bring this up again like i said if i find that video that i was talking about i'll upload it it was pretty long it was like an hour maybe an hour and a half or maybe it was 45 minutes it felt like an eternity though as i was listening and just hearing all the details is absolutely wild so um anyway let me know what your thoughts are on this situation uh, let me know in the comments if you like this video please give it a like also subscribe to see more content like this in the future um i'm just i'm i really need to be more creative with my content i've been getting bored i've been getting uh stuck in my own ideas and in my own head and so you know i i took a little bit of a break to to kind of figure out what's going on and I figured out that it's just, it's not, it's not compelling. I'm not motivated. I'm not pursuing what I want to pursue, you know. And even, especially when YouTube demonetized my channel, that really, uh, I really took a hit with that. Just thinking, okay, it's not something that I'll be able to support my family off of anymore. But I think it's something that I need to continue with. So I'm not going to worry about anything in the future because... Um, I love posting. So anyway, if you like more of these freestyle videos, let me know. Thank you for watching. My name is Addison Tweedy. This has been Tweedy's Take, and I will see you next time. Yabasia.